what is up everyone and welcome back to the channel welcome to another video today i want to talk about the stigma that you have in the motorcycling world where we have chinese manufacturers being blamed of copying uh, european manufacturers or japanese manufacturers or american manufacturers well one of these uh, american manufacturers per se that i really really like and really like their bikes is uh, harley davidson and uh, to be perfectly honest at least here in europe the smallest harley davidson you can get is the nightster which is over 10,000 euros and has a 975 cc 90 horsepower v-twin engine so they are wonderful bikes they are great bikes i really like uh, the history that comes with it and the passion and everything but what if you're a very beginner rider what say 18 years old and you've just gotten your license and you want something small to learn to ride on but you kind of want that harley davidson magic well in some markets harley has recognized this and uh, are trying to build entry-level motorcycles for young kids that are inexpensive to buy inexpensive to run and they've partnered up with uh, I think it's an Indian manufacturer and they made the Harley-Davidson X440 which has nothing to do with your regular Harley-Davidson's. It has a single cylinder 440 cc engine. It's an air-cooled engine. It makes about 27 horsepower and about 36 Nm of torque. So it is torquey but it's an air-cooled single. It has nothing in common with the Harley Davidsons that we know, the big V-twin cruisers. So the problem is, what do you get as a beginner rider if you want a small, light, nimble V-twin cruiser? Because Harley Davidson ain't building one and they're not selling you one because the X440 is more of a naked scrambler style bike. Well, this is an instance where I think a big manufacturer should have copied a Chinese copycat because today, we're going to be taking a look at the QJ SRV 300. And as we usually do, we're going to take it from front wheel to back wheel and see what this thing is all about. Come on, let's take a look at it. All right, starting up front, we have an upside down fork with a 29 degree rake. We have a 280 millimeter front brake disc with a quad piston caliper, ABS front and rear, LED high and low beams, LED indicators and right behind the front wheel we have our radiator because this is a liquid cooled engine so nothing special up front but in keeping with the traditional classic cruiser style motorcycle uh, we have our round headlight up here it's full LED it has a certain presence to it it has a certain look. Moving around to the side, we have our 13 and a half liter fuel tank. We have our 300 cc V-twin liquid cooled engine that puts out about 31 horsepower and about 26 Newton meters of torque. We have our rider pegs, which are mounted far forward. So we have forward controls. Uh, we have our two into one exhaust and uh, you're gonna enjoy this exhaust because I certainly am enjoying it. We have our 15 inch rear wheel with a 240 millimeter brake disc out back, again with ABS and our dual shock suspension, which is adjustable for preload. The seat is about 700 millimeters tall, so it's a very low seat, perfect for even the most vertically challenged of riders. And out back, we have our rear end with uh, a rear LED tail light and rear LED turn signal indicators. Now, you can find aftermarket uh, side bags. Uh, you can find uh, a sissy bar or you can mount a top case. You can turn this thing into quite the little touring cruiser. Kind of a miniature Grand American Tourer. Moving around to the dashboard, we have our turn signal indicators, we have our hazard lights, we have our engine start button, front brake, which is adjustable for reach. We have our idiot lights here, we have our ref counter, speedometer, gear position indicator, clock and odometer with a trip meter. Uh, 
uh, we have our ignition up front, we have our cable operated clutch, we have our high and low beam, our enter and select button to go through the menus of the screen, our turn signal indicators and our horn. Also, this is where we fill up the gas tank. It's again with the key and it's the style of gas cap that remains attached to the bike. So, all in all, a very simple machine, but there's more than meets the eye here because these kinds of bikes needn't be very complicated. What you need on the other hand is this. Do you hear the burble? This is a liquid-cooled V-twin engine that burbles like an air-cooled one. And honestly, when you buy a bike like this, you want the soul, you want the passion, you want the drama of a bike like this. And this brings it in a very, very inexpensive package. So, let's ride it around for a little bit and see exactly what's what. Come on. All right, riding the QJ SR V300. Now, before we start, this is a less than 5,000 euro motorcycle, okay? Here in Romania, it's sold at 4,800 euros or 4,800 euros and uh, somewhere in Greece, I think it's a little bit over 4,000. Anyway, it's between four and 5,000 motorcycles. It's between four and five thousand euro motorcycle, and uh, this thing is a little beast. It's now, if you think about it, it's actually not all that special. It's just a 300 cc engine. Uh, it has ABS. It has a digital dash, but it has a simple digital dash. It doesn't have something a big TFT complicated stuff. It doesn't have riding modes. It doesn't have anything special. It's a back to basics bare bones motorcycle with just a little bit of the creature comforts that uh, we've come to know and love like fuel injection, like ABS brakes, like a fuel level indicator. But the way they have set up this thing, it's nice and low to the ground and quite easy to maneuver uh, at 164 kilograms it is a light bike no way no way you can say this is a heavy bike it has a classic cradle frame so the engine isn't a stress member so it kind of feels like your regular old school bike but yet it still handles pretty decently and uh, the engine although torquey it also makes power up high i would have liked a little bit more uh, low end grunt a little bit but would you just listen to it <laughs> this engine has presence okay this engine has a lot of presence to it and it pulls it pulls it pulls it pulls it's a wonderful little engine and in terms of maneuverability it's so easy to low speed maneuver the clutch is nice and light and yeah boy the brakes feel positive but yeah the clutch is nice and light you can easily feather the clutch you can feel the bite point which is very important for a beginner uh, in terms of braking, the, re the rear brake is good, the front brake feels positive, it has an instant bite to the front brake. And uh, in terms of suspension, the fork is good, the rear shocks you can feel have not that much travel, but again, it's a cruiser style of motorcycle. Uh, what do you expect? But when you open the taps... Oh, baby! Oh, this is such a nice bike to ride. It's fun. That's the thing about it. It can be a very, very economical, fuel-efficient uh, city commuter. It only gets like 3.5 liters per 100 kilometers. That's all it drinks. So it's quite a, an economical bike, even around the city. It has ample power for being just a 300. Oh, baby. 
but yeah as soon as you open the taps and here maneuvering it through a roundabout instantly you're confident in it you can have a lot of fun flick it from left to right uh, the throttle isn't snatchy so it doesn't catch you out <laughs> this is a nice little bike but uh, I think we're running out of fuel because if I brake hard the fuel moves forward and I know the fuel pickup is right here at the bottom of the tank so uh, we're just gonna do another lap around the, the yard and uh, take it back before we run out of fuel but yeah this is a nice bike and like I said in the beginning of the video I do not understand why a company like Harley-Davidson decided to make a motorcycle a beginner entry-level motorcycle that costs six thousand dollars or thereabouts a single cylinder air-cooled engine when stuff like this is, exists they could have branded it they could have licensed it this is you ride Harley-Davidson on the side of the tank and sell it for 5,000 euros you're gonna have yourself a winner on your hand but they decided not to so thankfully we have our Chinese manufacturers our Chinese copycats that are copying even the bikes that the big manufacturers didn't build but should have built anyway that has been it for a first look uh, at the QJ SRV 300 it's a wonderful machine if you get the opportunity to ride it Please go and test ride it, and until next time guys, take care out there, and ride safe. Bye! <laughs>